Hello everybody, welcome to Experience Jesus with AVG, Apostle Victor James M. Aguirre. Now I'm excited, thanks be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has enabled this opportunity for us to be able to gather together and fellowship. You know, the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 1, it said our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. Jesus speaking in his capacity as God-man said in John chapter 4, he said God is spirit and God seeks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And Paul came by the Holy Ghost speaking in Philippians chapter 3 verse 3. He said we, the born again Christian, are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and put no confidence at all in the flesh, which means... We are the desire, we are the fulfillment of the Father's desire for spirit worshippers. So we worship God in the spirit. And since we are spirit worshippers, wherever you're watching from, there is no distance at all. So we are all fellowshipping together right now, like as in one place. There's no distance, and I'm excited. But before we go on in this broadcast, in the name of Jesus, I want to ask you, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. I need you to go to my YouTube channel, uh, maybe after this teaching or during this teaching or now, right now, just go and come back, you know. So press that subscribe button. We have loads of teachings, you know, on YouTube that will be a blessing to you in the name of Jesus. And then secondly, um, Please share this teaching. You know, just press the uh, share button. You know, I, I need everybody to share it. Let it go viral because we're going to be doing a study on uh, 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 on a subject very, very important that the Holy Ghost has inspired my heart. You know, to to come with as we break the bread of life, and the bread of life is Jesus that we break. I love you and thank you so very much. You know, for being there. You know, and all your encouraging words. I'm so excited. Praise God. Amen. All right. Once again, welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. Amen. <laughs> All right. Um, I wrote here, I said, there is, a, there is a way to go this year. There's a way to go. Not just this year. There's a way for believers to go. The Bible calls it in Proverbs, the path. He said, the path of the just. That means the path of the believer, the born again Christian. So there's a way to go, you know. Uh, and that, this way is called a new way. A new and living way. Now this way, or this path. That believers, born again Christians, are expected to walk in or to go. Um, the Bible says it, it has never existed before. That's why it is called a new and living way. If it is new, that means it wasn't before. It just came. It was just, quote unquote, invented. So, let's check the scripture for that. And see what the scripture says. In Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible said in verse 19 and 20. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 and 20. Um, but if please put it up. Um, Hebrews 10, chapter 10. No, put King James, please. Uh -huh. No, chapter 10, verse 19 and 20. I, I need you to see. There is a way for believers to go. There is a way that God has made available for us to go. There is a path. But the Bible said this path, this way, is a new and living way. It's new and alive. Wow. Awesome. He said, having therefore brethren. So he's not talking to unbelievers. He's not talking to um, Muslims. Be be uh, there's nothing wrong with Muslims. It's just that they are not born again. You know? If you're a Muslim, I beg you in the name of Jesus. You have to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. I beg you. I beg you. Uh, uh, whatever it is you have been taught, you have been told, that you practice in the absence of Jesus, God cannot be found. God, uh, I mean, it's just practically impossible. 
you know, God wants you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jesus died for you. He died for me. He died for the sins of the world. You don't have to pay the price for your sin. That's why Jesus came. All right. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19, he said, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So into the holiest where God Almighty is. Born again Christians have boldness to come in there. We don't beg God to go to God. Born again Christians don't beg God. No, we don't do, oh God, oh precious God, almighty, mighty God, the great I am God, the everlasting omini, 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 what do they call it? Omini, <laughs> omini, omini, science, omini, you know, omini this, omini that, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah El Elyon, Jehovah whatever. No, leave those uh, uh, protocols. Those protocols were in place, necessary, before this new way was instituted. He said, for born-again Christians, we enter with boldness. Allegata! We go with boldness. Ayoka, sonse, grotea, gratata, eluta. Look, you need to see the way the anointing surged through my spirit. We go to the Father, to Almighty God, with boldness. We say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm here. No matter the condition, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, even if you feel dirty, if you bad, or you made mistake, you just disappointed God, you disappointed yourself. He said, when it comes to you coming to God as born again Christian, a brethren, a believer, brother or sister in Christ, he said, come with boldness. How, what is the guarantee or what is the confidence of our boldness? He said, by the blood of Jesus. Some, excuse me, somebody paid the price for us to be able to access God boldly. He said, God is not looking for people to look to seek him, you know, with fear, with intimidation, with uh, uh, doubt with uncertainty no god is not looking for that god is looking for men and women who will come boldly to him because a blood was shed a life was shed a life was given glory be to god am i making sense now in verse 20 verse 20 he now says in verse 20 he said by a new and living way there is a new and living way there is a way that is new to come to god now and that way is both new and alive, is living, which the same Jesus, whose blood we, by which, whose, by, by him, whose blood we enter boldly, had consecrated for us through the veil. The word veil there means his flesh. That is to say, his flesh. Are you seeing that? Jesus used his flesh on the cross. To remove the barrier between man and God. So when Jesus on the cross was stretched. Woo! As soon as Jesus became stretched. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. God was about to declare another entrance to him. You know, Jesus offered his own physical body to remove the barrier. You know, Isaiah prophesied. Isaiah gave a prophecy. He said there's a barrier between man and God. He said there's a barrier between you and your God. And you know what Isaiah calls it? He said iniquity. Iniquity has separated you from your God. Iniquity. You know, sin separated. Remove that. God is not excited losing man. No. Man is his will. Man is God's idea. It was not something that somebody gave to God. No. Man is God's idea. And God has always wanted to be with man. That's his... His purpose, his idea, his intention, God's heart. God, you know, it's like somebody that wants to marry. I mean, God fell in love with a lady. A guy just fell in love with a lady. I mean, this guy is mad about this lady, man. And everything he thinks about is the lady. You know, that's why I like that song. When, when a man is in love with a woman, I mean, he will give anything. So God is in love. Before God created man, he fell in love with man that he had not even created yet. So when he created man, man came forth as the object of his will, his love, his passion. Are you seeing? So God wanted to live with man permanently. 
That's why every cool of the evening, he will come to Adam in the Garden of Eden. You know, so when Jesus was born, the Bible said, the angel said, the name of this child is called Emmanuel. God with us. Are you seeing him? But when Jesus paid the price on the cross, God stopped being Emmanuel. Don't let anybody drag you into Emmanuel. No, we have, we have left that part. We have, left, we have moved in the name of Jesus Christ. We have moved above God being Emmanuel, God being with us. No, no, no. God is no longer just with us. God is in us. We became his tabernacle, his temple, his house. We, we house God. We carry God. That's what the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He said we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This, we are the temple of God. So God does not live in physical houses. Before, physical building used to be a means where people go to, to access God. So the way you come, uh, uh, um, it's not even certain that you will meet with God. But now in this New Testament, because of, God, because of the body of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, Jesus used his body to remove the veil between the holy and the holiest place so that everybody could see God directly by himself. Once you become born again, once you come into Christ, you can meet with God one-on-one. -on -one. You don't need a prophet. You can talk with God one-on-one. -on -one. You do not need a prophet for that. You don't need to go through a prophet. No. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 1, quickly, daddy, in, from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Let's, let's quickly read it. You know, Hebrews 1. He said, God, who at in sundry times, in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. So in the Old Testament, before Jesus came, God was speaking to mankind through prophets. Through the prophet. Isaiah will come, thus hear the Lord. Elijah will come, thus hear the Lord. David came, thus hear the Lord. Moses came, thus hear the Lord. All the prophets will come and say, thus hear the Lord. Are you seeing it? So the Bible said in verse 2, quickly, verse 2. He said, the same God had in this last day spoken unto us by his son. So God does not necessarily speak to mankind through prophets anymore. So any church where everybody is waiting for the prophet to come and prophesy, and the prophet is prophesying one by one to everybody. And he's giving prophecy. Uh, your father's enemy is doing you. Uh, there's a devil that has blocked you. Something is wrong with that church. Of course, prophecy is allowed for the church. The Bible says prophecy is for edification. To edify the whole church. You know? But go and check the kind of prophecy going on. They prophesy about you wearing uh, red under, uh, you know, underpants. You know, red underwear, red bra. This is this are the spirit of lust. This is the spirit of lust. That's not the spirit of God. You, you know what I mean? And then people want to hear about enemies. Who who is behind my case? Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. The Bible says if a man's way is pleasing to God, if his ways are pleasing to God, he will make his enemies to be at peace with him. Our problem is not the enemy, our problem is pleasing to God. Now, when I mean pleasing to God, a lot of people, because of their wrong mentality, they now start thinking of, uh, am I fornicating? Am I wearing the right dress? Am I wearing gold or earring? I'm not supposed to wear earring so that I can please God. Am I waking up by 6 a.m. in the morning, you know, to look at the north or the south to show that I'm pleasing? No, 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 that's not the pleasing to God. The pleasing to God is that you should know there's a new way now. There's a new way to God. There's a new way for everyone who is born again. There's a new way to God now. And that way was consecrated, made available, made ready for all of us through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus, the flesh of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Are you getting it? Thank you, precious Father. Woo! Glory be to God. Woo! So the Bible said, when it is time to relate, to talk with God, we go boldly because of the blood. No matter what your problem is, no matter what your failure is, no matter what your challenges are, you say go with boldness before, because of the blood. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the blood, I come to you, Abba Father. My God, I'm like, and don't, when you are talking to God, don't think God to be somewhere far. You know, some people used to think that God is in Russia. So as I'm praying now, as I'm talking to God, God will begin to come back from Russia to come to my place, to come and hear me. No, 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 no. He lives in you. He dwells in you. 
He walks in you. As a matter of fact, he parabolates in you. He said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. The word, the word walk there means to parabolate, you know, to go up and down, to move up and down, inside of you and I. That's what God does. God is not outside of us. He's inside of us. Are you getting him? So I'm talking about born again Christians. So, so the Bible said here uh, in uh, John chapter 14, verse 6. In John 14, 6. Uh, in John chapter 14, verse 6. Look at the way. In John 14, 6. This is Jesus talking. You know, because there's a new and living way. And in this way, we go to God boldly. We don't go to God begging God. You know, it's so unfortunate. Don't let your feelings determine or dictate your response, your fellowship, your walk with God. Don't let your feelings do that. No, it should be your faith. That's why the just lives by faith. So this year, or and every other year as we go on, the way to God is brand new and it's living. Watch this. Jesus said unto, the, unto him, <clears throat> I am the way. Jesus did not say he has a way. No. He didn't say he has a way. He said he is the way. Jesus is the way. The way to God now, Jesus is. Woo! Glory be to God. We don't look for way to God anymore. We don't look for way. I don't have to do fasting to get to God. No. Emegwe. Emegwe. That will hit religious people very hard. I know that religious spirit will be angry with me now. But... Sir, ma'am, don't be angry with me. You don't want to be angry with me. I'm telling the truth. Jesus didn't say he has a way to God. Every other person who came before Jesus Christ came to say or to suggest that there is a way to God, but they don't know it. Jesus did not say he knows a way to God. He said he himself is the way to God. Jesus is the way to God. Glory be to God. Fasting is not the way to God. Crying is not the way to God. Feeling depressed is not the way to God. Sadness is not the way to God. I'm telling you, you know, whatever the feelings you can self-generate is not the way to God. Jesus is the way to God. The way to God is new now and is alive. It's a being, B-E-I-N-G, and his name is Jesus. So, when your focus becomes Jesus, you are guaranteed God by all means. I'm going to say that again. God punish the devil. When your focus becomes Jesus, you are guaranteed God by all means. You know what I mean by that? When you make Jesus your focus, your faith will be in the right place. That your faith is in the right place, no matter the condition or your challenge, it will give way. Ah, yeah, yeah. It will, I'm telling you, your condition or challenge will give way. You know, let me give you an example. Jesus said one time, you know, he said, um, um, well, I think he was talking to the, 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 the people. He said, whosoever receives my disciple, any one of these guys, he said, the person has received him. And whosoever received Jesus has received the Father. So what Jesus is saying is that, <clears throat> you see, this is my guys. This is my disciples. This is my guys here. What Ever they say, if you believe and receive it, my voice is what will sound in their voice. Are you getting it? That's exactly what Jesus is to us. When your faith becomes targeted at Jesus, not at things, your faith should not be targeted at things, but at Jesus. What happens is that the whole of God is manifested on your behalf becomes immediately manifested. You don't have to start struggling with the powers of darkness. Oh, you powers of darkness. You forces of my father's household. Leave me alone. Let me go. Release me. What is wrong with you? Your faith is in the wrong place. Your faith is in the wrong place. That's why. That's why. Before I go any further, please, I got to show you this. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, the book of Ephesians 1, verse number 15. Watch this. Watch Ephesians 1, 15 by yourself. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wherefore, I also, this is Paul talking. He's talking to his converts, 
to born again Christian believers at Ephesus. Paul said, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, I heard of your faith. Your faith is properly placed. You see, a lot of Christians, their faith is not properly placed. That's why they are frustrated. They are miserable. Marriages are not working. Things are, not fall, things are falling apart. The, the reason things are falling, because the Bible said, it is by Jesus all things hold together. All things consist. It is by G Jesus is the gravitational force that holds things together, according to me. Because that's what the Bible said. By him, by Jesus, all things consist. Everything is in place because of Jesus. So take Jesus out, everything will fall apart. So the reason for things fall apart is the absence of faith focused on Jesus. I don't know whether you are, I'm, I'm, you are understanding what I'm saying. A lot of people, their faith is in the prayer of war that they are praying. They are war prayer. All my enemies, you must go. You must go. You must go. You see, their faith is wrongly placed. That's why they are miserable Christians. They are frustrated. Can you imagine a Christian, a born-again Christian, lives in Nigeria? Eh? This black African, I don't know, sometimes I don't really understand. He lives in Nigeria, a born-again Christian, goes to Europe. He still joined them to be praying, all my enemies, that say I will not make it. Fall down, die. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. What is wrong with you? A, a, others are still in Nigeria making it. You, you have been able to get visa. You went abroad. You are now in the UK. You are now in America. You are now in Canada. You are now in Australia. You are still joining them to pray all my enemies that say in my father's house, my father's household enemy that say I should not make it in, in the name of Jesus. Father and die. Father and die. What is why didn't those enemies stop you from getting visa? Can't you wake up? When will you wake up? I come to Americans and smell the coffee. What enemy? When your faith becomes properly placed, aya, your ways will be pleasing to God. He will make your enemies to be at peace with you. Look, I am enjoying <laughs> the kind of peace I'm enjoying. It's alarming. I'm telling you, my father used to be, my, my late father, my father has been dead many years ago. He used to be a witch doctor. I remember when I got born again, you know, some group of men of God said, no, uh, ah, you must do deliverance. Otherwise, <coughs> all those jujus, all those fetish things, you know, will be fighting and worrying you. I didn't, do, I didn't listen to them. I kept my faith on Jesus. And none of those things were, were able to fight or hold me. So far, I have lived a glorious life. A victorious life. Do I, have I had challenges? Many. Plenty. But every one of them, I come out tops. You know why? Jesus is my focus. Jesus is my victory. Jesus is my peace. Jesus is my way. Jesus is my life. Jesus, he has become, look, Jesus has become so, so real to me that physical things, you know, I don't know how to, I, I can't explain it. Physical things don't, are, not, are not real to me. The way Jesus is real to me, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet. You know, I don't do that if you watch my teachings. But when it comes to Jesus, I must tell you the truth. You know, Paul said, after I heard that your faith is in the Lord Jesus, he's talking to born again Christian, that your faith is in the Lord Jesus. You have removed your faith from handkerchief, mantu. You have removed your faith from prophet and prophecy. You have removed your faith from warfare prayer. Who made you a war, a war, a war monger? 